In the not too distant future, next Sunday, AD, there was a guy named Joel, not too different from you or me. He worked at Gizmonic Institute, just another face in a red jumpsuit. He did a good job cleaning up the place, but his bosses didn't like him, so they shot him in the space. To commercial side. Hi everybody, I'm Joel, as you know, and I'm on the satellite of love here. Yeah. We're trapped out in outer space. Just got done cleaning up the robots for the experiment this week. Mm. All nice and clean, there you commercial go. Commercial sign in 15 seconds. Okay, I guess we got a com uh, commercial coming up real soon, and uh, we're expecting a call from the evil scientists as well, so you might want to stick around. Commercial sign in 5, 4, 3, 2, commercial sign now. Stick around, we'll be right back. A cow. A bowl of quisp. A Gutenberg printing press. Um, oh, the first level ROM card of the Cray-1 supercomputer, Generation C, 1987. Right. Oh, yes. Oh. yes. All right, yes. hey, the scientists are calling. Come in, Joel, my little spunk dumpling. Hey, sirs, is it time for the invention exchange? No, it's time for the AAU swim meet. Yes, it's time for the invention exchange! Dazzle us, Sparky. All right, sirs. This week, I've got a new way of juggling water. Okay, you're going to help me, Crow. You're going to pitch to me. So take okay. this turkey uh, baster. Uh -huh. Carry it over there. Take All it right. over that All away. Right. Okay, and I've got these two ping pong paddles, okay, with special surfaces that repel water. Okay, and Crow, on the count of three, I want you to shoot a jet of water here, okay? Okie dokie. Ready? Uh -huh. One. Two, three. Nice shot. Uh, um, arc it up a little bit, Crow, on the count of three. Sorry. Let's go. One, two, three. Perfect. Good. Got it. Okay. Oh, oh. See? Look it. I'm juggling water, you guys. Cool. See? Under the leg. Wow. Oh, yeah. Over the cool. back. Here hey. we go. See? Just like that. See? Whoops. Oh. Dropped it. What do you think, sirs? Oh, I've seen more impressive tricks on a box of Cracker Jacks. Well, there are those little uh, tattoo things, those liquids. Larry, on. Larry. Mm, yeah. Now, our invention this week combines the arty effect of the old Etch-a-Sketch with the educational payoff of Uncle Milty's Ant Farm. We call it the Insect-a-Sketch. Larry? What we've done is we've taken the normal directional capabilities of the ant and scrambled them with an ultrasonic directional device, a little guidance system of our own. See? I wrote my name! <laughs> yes, and like its predecessor, it clears with a shake. Very nice, Larry. Now make me a picture of Jokey Smurf. Okay, I'd love to. Well, what do you think? Oh, uh, I, I think it could really bruise a child's tender psyche. Thank, Thank you. you! Well, our movie this week is called Project Moonbase, and it features a group of astronauts almost as inept as you are, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> and a plot as weak as herbal tea. <laughs> yes, but first, how about a double dip of our old friend Commando Cody and the radar men from the moon? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not listening. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Interesting reaction. What do you think, Larry? I think I'm almost done. See, I just gotta get the little curved Smurf hat in. Give me this. <laughs> Taste the pain, buddy. Enjoy. Whoa. Oh, hey. Whoa. Oh. 
Did you really think it was better? Yeah, I think uh, you were much better. The water juggling is really pretty uh, solid. Oh. Definitely. Cool. Yeah. Hey, I a new character. It. Yeah. Yeah, right. George Wallace in his pre-gubernatorial days. Clayton Moore before his Lone Ranger days. And Dale Van Sickle, he never made a bad film. But Noel Kravitz did. Ronald Davidson, John Davidson's smarter brother. And Franklin and Jack. Hey, come hey. On. Close. Chapter 7 Camouflage Destruction Commando Cody learns that Graber and Daly are in Clark Mountain. They go after them through Zagnut Valley. <laughs> Watch, me, catch me, <laughs> Watch me, catch me, try to catch me. I'm a little rabbit. <laughs> Gets here, give yourself up. Try not to get too close to him. But look, I don't argue. Do what I tell you. And wet your lips. Straighten your tie. <laughs> don't move. Oh, I mean, you can move a little bit. Uh, you can breathe and stuff. Montana looks left. Drop your gun. He's open. Fires away, and it's incomplete. Oh, that could have been his rotator cuff. Holding towards Earth. Oh, wow. Really? Meanwhile, back at the Cody Institute for people who almost die every week. I got the week. flying suit under control just before I crashed, but I'd lost my gun. When I tried to look for Graber and his pal, they had disappeared. They must have taken off to the hills on foot. So where are we now? Oh, think about I'm it, lady. You're in the lab. Except that we do know that Graber's been hanging out at Al's Cafe. They'll probably never show up there again. But I might find somebody around there who knows them. Anyway, I'm going to give it a try. That's his desk I'll call you later. It's just a spare. Feels good, though. Al's Cafe, serving the underworld since 1923. Sure, I've seen him around here and talked to him a few times, but I don't know anything about him. What did you talk to him about? Well, I'm a mechanic, and the last time they asked me to do some work on a truck motor for him, I couldn't handle the job, so yesterday it was. I told him to try Benson's over on the south side of town, but I don't know whether they ever went over there or not. Mm -hmm. I'll check up on that. Do you know Benson's address? It's on Central between 14th and 15th, south side of the street. But I don't know his address. Good, thanks. I'll let you know if they ever turn up here again, Mr. Cody. Good, see you later. Boy, I hate that guy. Meanwhile, back at the casino, the Kino game raged on. Ever kissed a dog? I mean, like, right on the mouth. Rock, calling ready. Bill, pick up line one, please. It's your wife, Mr. Reddick. Come in, Krog. We have the new ray gun ready to mount in a well camouflaged truck, Your Excellency, and are prepared to renew our campaign. And our contracts. Good. What are your first objectives? Since the authorities here learned of your planned invasion from the moon, there have been heavy troop movements in this area. We plan to concentrate on destroying troop trains. Very well. Work as fast as possible. We must have Earth's defenses completely disorganized They're before cool. we start our invasion from the moon. Yes, Your Excellency. Yes, Your Excellency. Get a bomb, hire some thugs, get new thugs. I'm beginning not to believe this world conquer thing anyway. Is everything ready? Yes. We can pick up the truck and get going. Here are the timetables. The map with the best points of attack indicated. Cover as many of them as you can today. And right. then knock off for a light lunch. You guys have been working hard. No, I don't remember anyone answering that description. But of course, we run a lot of jobs through here, and I don't know all the drivers. How about these trucks that are in here now? Well, this one and this one are a couple of my regular customers. That one's a cross-country job. It came in last night for a ignition check. I didn't see who the driver was. The night man took care of it. 
Okay, if I look it over? Sure, go ahead. This little honey? Oh yeah, it's a smart little number. I can see you're a man who knows his trucks. This one's got all the candy. Going after Moon Man, this is perfect. It's a real honey. Yep, real crates and everything. Hi. Get away from that truck. Hey, what's going on? Frisk him. Stay out of this or you'll get hurt. Now look, I don't want any trouble in here. So I'm just gonna hit you with this crowbar. Hey, Joel, do mechanics fight better than scientists do? Well, they often have heavy wrenches in their hands, so they do a lot better. Oh. Nobody touches my snap-on tools. Cool. This is hey. a little thing I made. I knew we'd use them sometime. Oh. What do you need, huh? Hey, that guy wrenched that guy? his back. You really socketed that guy. <laughs> He's hammered. <laughs> hmm. Ooh. Ooh, he bench pressed him. <laughs> oh, look, he's getting tired. What a retread. It's the Vice Squad. It's John Cleese, you bastard. Let's roll. Well, at least he's getting used to being beat up. Yeah, he's not even hurt. He must have been using Nerf tools or something. Not even a scratch. Underoos are fun to wear. The truckload of radios was a And I can fly from here to Rolled there. With a fake door. I'm sure they're planning on hiding something inside. Probably a ray gun. That's what I'm afraid of. They'll probably start blasting again any time now. I've sent Ted out to the airport to stand by on a plane with some light bombs. He hasn't been able to lift heavy bombs since his hernia. Attacks, I'll fly out and try to locate that truck, then radio Ted to bomb it. Cody Laboratory. Ah, uh, Mr. Cody, I'm so upset. They just blasted a troop train on the east end of Carson Valley. I'm right, here all by right myself, on. and I don't know what to do. Please help. They just blasted a troop train in the east end of Carson Valley. Radio Ted to take off on our plane Uncanny. that wants to fly around out there. I'll contact him as soon as I spot the truck. Right away. Hello, Domino's. Calling Ted Richards. Calling Ted Richards. Nipple, nipple, twig, twig, fly! Whoa! Boy, he's got a nasty tailwind. Must have been something he ate. Shouldn't they take off before they crop dust? Well, unless, unless we're doing ginseng. Yeah, ginseng. Fly the plane, Ted. Get the girl, Ted. Oh, I'm gonna show him something. Who do you think, Dolt? It's going along a dirt road just east of the end of the valley. I'll be right with you. Okay. I'll keep them in sight until you show up. Does Cody normally travel with a full radio pack on? It's his radio flyer. The flying ham outfit. Hey, UPS, Cody must be tracing a package or something. Now, this is the third time I've done this camouflage destruction scene, so listen up. Cody's after us again. We'll stop him. Use the rifle. That should stop him. Pull! Oh, I missed him. Drift left. Pull! They got homicide doors on that thing. Did you get them? No, but I scared them off. So we can fly back and tell the cops where we are? So what? By the time they get out here, we'll be long gone. Ted, 
Who is it? It's me. It's always going to be me. Whoever calls you, it's me. stuff in the back I kind of live in my plane really. you know if you want to put the seat back go ahead you know just make yourself comfortable what is the truck's just ahead fly over that dirt road okay where are the bombs right there oh could you guys have found a smaller bomb what are the odds of a moving plane hitting a moving target with a moving bomb that looks like a pineapple Jeez. Oh, great, double O Cody. Do you have a license to kill now, Mr. Cody? What was that? Oh, just an exploding dip in the road. There's a plane up there. He must have bombed us. And it looks like he's coming back for another try. Uh oh. Stop. We'll give it a blast with our ray gun. That was pretty close, but drop down a little lower next time. This okay. time, use a water balloon. That'll really scare him. Hold it up right there. Okay, let's see. Bathroom stuff, books, knickknacks, kids' room. Hey, where's that ray gun anyway? Oh! Hey, they've stopped. Looks like they're aiming a gun. Dive on them quick. Let's stay in the okay. plane, Ted. Blast from the Chevy horn. You missed. Aim too quick. Turn the truck around. I get another shot at it. Right. Well, they missed, but how are we going to get a cliffhanging ending for this episode? You know, my flying helmet's really hard on my scalp, Ted. How do you keep yours so smooth and young looking besides using shellac all the time? Well, that's the end. Next week, a new character for sure. There's no way you can get a guy out of that. Uh -uh. from Republic. He gets in trouble every week, but he's saved by editing. Just a tweak of the nipple sends him on his way. A pumpkin head and a rocket pack, he'll save the day. His laboratory is a boxing ring when bad guys come to mix it up. Someday always gets kidnapped and Cody has to fix it up. He drinks his tea at Al's Cafe and flies along on wires. He beats up crooks and flies with hooks and puts out forest fires. Bad guys, beware. Cody is there. You'll like his hair. It's under his helmet because we couldn't think of a good rhyme. And that's the end of the Commando Cody theme song. So sit right back and with a will of granite and watch Chapter 8, The Enemy Planet. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. On May 17th and 8th, Superior Court of California, Los Angeles, Graber and his goon Daly were sentenced to three consecutive five-year sentences at the Actors Correctional Facility in Chino. Daly went on to win the 1989 Chicago LA. You missed. Aim too quick. Turn the truck around. I get another shot. Okay. Right. Why don't they just turn the gun around? Because they shoot right through the back of the truck, bro. Oh. But it's a rented truck. 
Yeah, but it's on uh, Grabber's card. Yeah, but he stole that card. But he's a thief. He's supposed to steal cards. Yeah, but the card is the Ace of Clubs. No, it's the Players Club card. He rented the truck and got two free hotel nights at Resorts International in Atlantic City and has a complimentary continental breakfast. Atlantic City? Atlantic City? Slowly, I Oh, turn. stop it. Step stop by it. Step. Ah, uh, they blew up the plane. That's okay, it was a rented plane. Okay, they... stop it. Shoot. Crack. Here he comes! Whoa! Incoming! Whoa! That was a close one. Meanwhile, back at the Cody Institute for Deceptive Editing. System of defense against those ray guns. It's practically impossible unless we build Did ray guns. Look at the skull on that guy. That he looks like my dead Uncle That's Phil. Right. Now. So if it beats with your approval, I'll I wonder how much he charges to haunt a house. You think you can do it? I'm not sure, but it's worth trying. Anything is better than sitting here like tin ducks in a shooting gallery. I heartily agree. If you're willing to make the attempt. You can certainly have permission. How soon can you start? Right away. The rocket ship is all fueled and ready. Joan, phone the rocket and tell ship. Me We're going back to the moon, right it away. sounds like. Terrific. Now, I want to get started before there's any chance of the news leaking out, so Reddick won't be laying for us when we get there. Mm. Watch the fin, everybody. Whoops. Oh. Ooh. Scarecrow, I think I'll miss oh, you boy, most of it. all. Hope this trip is as easy as your last one. Thanks. It should be. Since we're using the same footage. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Bye. Last one wasn't easy at all. They got shot at him. You know, they should invest in a control tower. Hi, folks. Here we go again. All right. All set. Anytime now. Safety belt fastened? No, it's not a law yet. Fire pilot jets. Fire all the jets. Get the Osmonds back on contract. This thing's loaded with candy. Watch what I can do with it. You know, I could get used to this. Yes, yes. Cruising around in a big jet, lots of beer. We're at full speed, Hank. Set a course for the moon. Which right. moon? Hey, take a left at L2. You can't miss it. Dave's van is parked out front. Let me show you what this baby can do. You guys ever seen a barrel roll? <laughs> Yikes. Gutsy. If I'd have brought that straight edge, we'd make it to the moon in half the time. Here, use my forehead, Phil. We're just about here. We ought to be down in another two hours. I'm getting really hungry. Everyone look for the stuckies. Now. We don't want to get too close, so swing west, Hank, and head for that same canyon. Okay. I see a thousand points of light. It looks like Cleveland. Okay. I'll take her down. We are now approaching the moon. Please place your office chairs into the upright position. The temperature on the moon is a balmy 70 degrees. Enjoy your stay. All right, set her down. Kind of looks like the upper Dells. Yeah. Wisconsin's a beautiful place to be. You sure you don't want me to go along? No, not this time. This is just a scouting trip to try to find where they keep the little Mary. How do you expect to do that? Well, if I'm lucky, I'll be able to capture one of the moon men and get some information out of him. 
Well, bundle up, honey. It's cold out there. Ooh, radishes. <clears throat> Good morning. Where's my paper? Where's our shrubs? Oh, I'm on the moon. How silly of me. <laughs> um, space travel. <laughs> and away! So sunny on the moon today. Huh? Well, I'm just standing on this hill and all looking around. <laughs> oh, there I am. <laughs> Stan that! Who? Huh? Give me that gun. It's mine. Oh, it's that old sea hunt routine. Pure helium? What are you trying to do? Kill me? Do you want me to cut off your air again? No. No. Where is the lunarium stored? I will tell you. Think I'll pass? Sure, you'll pass all Look, right. They're forcing him to eat Jones food. cooking. He wasn't in any position to lie no, very well. He's just getting his free continental I breakfast. I, the one of the men who got the I can't believe we're trying to annihilate you. This is delicious. Uh, hey, pass the jam, will you? It's a little after nine. I'll go right in. You find a place to hide and watch for me to come out. Okay. Jeez, he got right through their rigid security system. I can't believe that. About time you got here. I was delayed. I'm a phony, you know. <laughs> Oh, that's right, the sauna closes after 10. Well, I'll have to use my after hours pass key. All right, I found my Nintendo. I'm gonna play Super Mario Brothers and everything. This is gonna be so great. Oh, it's heavy. Sorry for that one. That felt wonderful. Oh, I shouldn't do that in a pressure suit. You got it. Yes. It's so heavy, it's going to take us a week to lug it back to the ship. <laughs> Get out of sight. You know, these moon men have uses for plywood we haven't even dreamed of yet. You wait in the car, I'm gonna go see if Judy's ready. Come on. Judy, I'm down in the lobby, can you buzz me up? Got Dad's car. Well, case of moose head, no curfew. This is gonna be the best road trip ever. Yeah. Here's a lesson for you teens. Always lock up and take the keys. Don't let a good boy go bad. Very well. Oh, Dad's gonna be torqued. I gotta make up a story. Hmm, wandered to the far Send side. Of... Yeah, that's it. Somebody stole my car. Send another one quickly. Listen, I'm not going to bail you out of trouble every time you lose a car. Someday I'm not going to be there for you. Yeah! Seems okay. This is so great. What those Duke boys didn't know was that Boss Hogg had stolen the General Lee. 
I think it's a ray gun. Oh, it's just some car. That must be they want to pass us. Huh? Moon signal or Another something. Another car chasing us. We better use our gun. We'll have to turn around to do it. There's a bunch of rocks ahead that'll give us some shelter. We'll wait until we get there. He's heading for some rocks. We'll have to stop him. Oh, it's the Das Boot theme all over again. That's das Boot. We're stuck. <laughs> I'll say we are. Pressure's down to nothing. I can fix this if I have time. I took moon I mechanics in high school. Your grenades. Okay. Stop behind a rock. But I think I can blast him. By this time, my lungs were aching for air. You hit the helium. Happy, happy, get happy, out of here, you guys. happy. Okay, Ted, stop here. I'm going to hover here for a moment and survey the landscape. Okay, now I think I'm going to fly over to that window and look for those rotten radar men from the moon. Are you done yet? No, I'm not done yet. Okay, let's do a flyby of that nudist colony. Swing it into high, Teddy. I feel the need. The need for speed. Come on, Servo. Who? I mean, Commando Servo. I think Krog wants to talk to us. You're a good little helper, Ted. Let's go. Come on. Hey, you got, I mean... <clears throat> Earthmen, I want you to take an atomic bomb the size of a pineapple, strap it to a Piper Cub, and then crash into Mount Vesuvius. Then, on your way back, swing by Al's and pick me up a uh, Swiss cheese on a college of roll. And, oh, I can't get into this. Joel, I want to be Commander Cody for a while. Ted, who is that squeaky little worm in the caftan down there? It's Krog, and he wants to wear your costume. Does he have any idea who he's dealing with? I could... Ah, your servo and Joel's holding you up. Pay no attention to the man holding me up. Take me down, Ted. I'm on a roll. Oh, come on, servo. Don't be such a baby. All right, Krog, the jig is up. Put down that cheese pistol and fight me like a man. Oh, jamming in your Venturi, bubblehead. Come Let's on, go, give me that gun. Man. Hey, oh, hey, go. Go. Save my commercial sign. Oh, you're lucky my chick's here. Well, Fly me in, Ted. Nope, next time Crow gets to be uh, Commando Cody. Commando. You hear that? He said I could do it. Commando Crow will never work. You're too much of a pansy. That's it. That's it. I don't know what it is, but it's it. Robert Heinlein. Hey, get me, fellas. I'm playing the violin. Jerome Pika Jr., cousin of Jerome Elite. <laughs> uh, kind of a typist joke. <laughs> miniatures by... What are they miniatures for? Uh, they used a lot of Hummel figurines in the uh, space sequences. Talmadge Farm remembers. In 1948, the Secretary of Defense proposed that the United States build a space station as a military guardian of the sky. By 1954, atom bombs and intercontinental rockets made it a necessity. 1963, the Beatles first appeared on Ed Sullivan. 1966, the first orbital flight was made by Colonel Bright Eyes. By 1970, the space station had been built and free men were reaching the moon. 1977, hot pants became the height of fashion. 
While this was going on, the enemies of freedom were not idle. They were working to destroy the space station. Sector number 12, come in, please. Sector number 12. Inspector 12, he checked my underwear. Hey, who hasn't? Sector number 13, come in, please. Just doing laundry. Sector number 13, come in, please. Sector number 13, come in, please. Sector number 13, in. We want Stand to by. recall your underwear. Mr. Entree, we're all ready for you, sir. Entree, Roundtree. Hey, it's Bob Newhart. No, it's Bob Hope. It's Tootie and Muldoon. Ooh, ooh. He's gonna get fired. Look at that, the fondue set of the future. Oh, look at the little tie. They must have got into a tie-cutting gag. Ron Tree here. Joel here. Servo here. Crow here. Joel here. Servo here. Crow here. I've called you 15 sectional chiefs to this radio rendezvous to brief you on the situation regarding Project A. We've tried for two years to get an agent on that space station. But due to impregnable security precautions, we have been unable to do so. Sorry I blew up like that. I have orders from the minister himself that we must not fail in destroying this perpetually menacing eye in the sky, and it must be done within two months. Or I'll be really Without steamed. Fail. Therefore, I must have information on every cool. person who might be sent to that space station. I have 300 operatives who are typed to resemble all leading scientists in the field. And you know how expensive that is. Due to money, or family, or some other reason, these people are under our absolute control. Your job will be to use every man. Not, Keep not us. Under absolute surveillance. Insofar as possible to monitor everything they say and do. Except the stupid stuff, you know, the knock-knock jokes. My assistant will now transmit to you names and addresses of those people we wish followed. Anderson, Andy, Adams, Al. And this Adam. Is a 24 hour job. But don't kill yourself getting it done. It's not worth that. Oh, the seat's warm. Ick. Calling the San Francisco sector. Yeah. Here is a special list for your attention John Adams, Henry Burns. Stand by. Yes? Wow, how futuristic. Oh, that phone bill's gonna be enormous. We have information on the next man to make the trip. Yeah, why don't you find this out? Just a second, I'll call Mr. Roundtree. Roundtree? Roundtree. Hey, that's Shaft. Important call for you, sir. Oh, I was just mowing on my own knee, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you for warming up the seat. Roundtree here. Your man for Project A is Dr. Werner. Repeat, Dr. Werner. W-E-R-N-H-E-R. -E What's it spell? Werner. Werner. What's it mean? Deadly. Check the files. See if we have a Dr. Werner. W-E-R-N-H-E-R. -E What's that spell? Werner. Werner. What's it mean? Deadly. Quickly. Well, here you are, sir. We have a double for him, all right. Mm -hmm. He's in San Francisco under Section Chief 3. Exact resemblance, except for the hair. It's the Werner Brothers. Oh, that's easy to fix. Send me some Grecian formula. Now, here's your plan of action. Dr. Werner is staying at the Central Hotel in room 524. I'll have a set of photographs to you within 15 minutes. It's the future. We can do Surround that. Surround the hotel with a cordon of operatives. Get a room as close to him as possible. Preferably next door. That's as close as possible. I'll be there within two hours to take charge of the operation myself. They'll never notice this bug the size of an apple lady. Ready here. Testing. One, two, three, four. All right, Sam. We'll be able to hear everything that goes on. I can hear Come you on. right through the door. You keep your ear glued to that receiver until you're relieved. 
Uh, could you send some solvent at the end of my shift? Say. Mr. Roundtree, Dr. Werner just came in. Hello? This is General Green speaking. Well, this is oh, Colonel yes, Mustard. Delighted to hear from you. I expected that you would call me. Yes. All arrangements have been completed for the circumlunar flight. Good. In the future, all phones will be invisible. Yes. His hand is glued to his ear. My, uh, He's a hell of a mime, though. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You'll make arrangements through the local transportation office. Good. Fine. Thank Super. you. Super. Great. Hope to see you soon, Unbelievable. Sir. Couldn't yeah, be better. Bye. Love and life. But you know, before I go, I go. Oh. Where is that double? He's shooting a doubleman there. Well, might be leaving any moment. He'll be here shortly. His plane arrived at the airport 25 minutes ago. Sir, the glue is set. Land shark double. Finally. Sorry, I was detained. I was doubling right. for someone else. It was double duty. Thank you. Do you know your job? I know. You must destroy the space station. According to all my available information, there is only two ways of doing it. Neither are very good. One, by getting into the bomb room of the station and setting off one of the bombs. Two, by taking control of the moon ship, which you're scheduled to take, and ramming it into the station. There's a bonus you if understand. you get killed. I understand. Sam, take him into the dressing room and match his hair to that photograph. Yes, sir. Or match Come the on. photo to the hair, either one. Well, how does the hair look? Like the photograph. Fine. Why, yes, Colonel, I've been waiting for you. A car in front of the hotel in 10 minutes. Good. I'll be there, sir. A big official yes. car. An official car. I'll watch for the insignia. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. He's going to leave in 10 minutes. Good. Uh, desk? Uh, Werner here. Uh, send a man up for my bags, please. Thank you. Send for a bellhop. What luck. I have to be dressed as a bellhop. Ah, uh, Gorilla Bellboy Double. Come in. Oh, you, uh, take these uh, two bags here, and uh, I'll take the briefcase. Uh-oh, he forgot to say please. How did you get here so quickly? That's how I got here so quickly. No, I'm going to use his Apple lady. Oh. Oh, wow, look at all this neat he, stuff he's he got. Oh. Wow, great. Bet he got this at the sharper image. Hey, I'm keeping that. Well, do I look like him? If you don't, we wasted a full year looking for you for this assignment. I know well, that in your, your own way that, that means yes. Case. Don't worry, I know my job. Your credentials, Dr. Werner. Just a moment. A uh, real bellboy, sir. Uh, yes, uh, you take those two bags, and I'll uh, I'll take this briefcase. He forgot to please, say please. please. Do you want a cab, sir? Uh, no, I'm expecting a call, an official call. How did you get here so fast? <laughs> Meanwhile, in Estes Park, Colorado. Ooh. Dr. Werner? Yes. I'll be filling in for your Reese's monkey. I see your hair plugs took. The general's waiting for you, sir. Thank you. And our doctor will rush you through security. This way, please. Sergeant, the bag. Spackham, Woodfill and Meat Substitute. We built this city of Spackham. Instead of rock and roll? Yep. You see, Bill, according to my calculus, 36 million miles should be equal to the ratio of 67 million miles. Cut the crap, Doctor. I love you. Look, it's Dr. Bellows. Yes, what is it? Dr. Werner has arrived and is going through security, sir. Good. Tell him I'll meet him for the briefing as soon as possible. Uh, say within a half hour. Within a half hour. Well, that's a break. I was afraid we'd have to cancel just because one uh, confounded civilian was going to be late. If you please, sir, uh, I don't really see why we have to take him at all. McIntosh and I can photograph the back face of the moon without help. A uh, lot of politics in these things, boy. 
If we hadn't played the science angle, we wouldn't have gotten the authorization. Funny how money. science uh, figures into this space travel. This round flight is a necessary step to the establishment of a lunar base. And you know how badly the country needs that base. I do, yes. but could you go over it again? And I'm mighty pleased that you ought to be the pilot. I hated to bump you out of the honor of making the first orbital flight, Bill, but, uh, well, it just had to be Bright Eyes. You know our reasons. Well, that's years past and long done with, sir. Bright Eyes is a good pilot. I'd be the first to admit it. You used to like Bright Eyes, eh? <laughs> Frankly, sir, uh, Captain Bright Eyes was a nice kid, but, well, Colonel Bright Eyes is a little hard to swallow. Well, Lindbergh got promoted from Captain to Colonel for less. The president simply followed the established precedent. Hmm. I suppose so, sir. Anyhow, this makes up for it. Being the first man to fly around the moon is all any pilot can ask for. Ah, uh, your donut Private wrapper, sir. The White House, sir. Thank you, Private Pyle. This is from Bismarck. Oh, I hate communiques in Abu Dhabi. Let's see that. Round moon, flight period, bright eyes, reporting to Speckham, Sunat, period, this change. Sounds like they're still typing it. Notify me immediately on Colonel Bright Ice's arrival and cut the orders accordingly. Yes, sir. Your donut wrapper, sir? Oh, no, sir, not again. They can't do this, sir. Sit down, Bill, and take it easy. You saw where those orders originated? Well, yes, sir, but I... I said sit down, Bill, and take it easy. Sitting, sir. Taking it easy, yeah. sir. Have a smoke. Uh, smoking... Oh, excuse me, sir. Sir, there are 50 reporters outside with about six truckloads of cameras. They tell me Bright Eyes is going to... Yes, I know, Bob. Route them through PRO and security and set up the briefing room. Then turn a hose on them. Get this through before blast off. Oh, Bill. Yes, sir? I'm sending you as co-pilot. What? No, sir. I mean, well, excuse me, sir, but... If it's all the same to you, leave McIntosh as co-pilot. He's a good apple. I'd just as soon not have the honor. Besides, uh, well, it wouldn't be fair to McIntosh. It's not a matter of being fair. This isn't some schoolboy game. This trip has got to be successful. Besides, I have more confidence in you than I have in McIntosh. All bright eyes. But if it were any other pilot, sir. Of course, I could go through the Joint Chiefs to the President, make a squawk, but that would mean postponing the flight. That would mean groveling, yes, and you know how I hate to do that. I'll do it. Good boy. Thanks, Bill. Have a biscuit, Bill. No, biscuits make me... Excuse me, I'm sorry. Colonel Bright Ice is here, sir. Send the Colonel in. Polly Prattles is with the Colonel, sir. What? Oh, Send God. Polly Prattles Send to Pittsburgh. Both. Pittsburgh is perfect for the Prissy Press Prima Donna with pressed aluminum party pants. Beauty. Colonel Bright Ice reporting is ordered, sir. And, and the, the beast. beast. My dear General. She enters the scene oh, like a float. So you, you know, I told the president I was so I'm delighted. I'm not talking root beer. You again. Does the phrase now, drop anchor mean, mean anything? Uh, thank you, Miss Prattle. Uh, uh, we're having a press conference uh, in a few minutes. Oh, but General, I hoped you might give me an exclusive. I'm very sorry, Miss Prattle. It's policy, you know. The president told Polly she could interview us. What? Oh, very well, Miss Prattle. I'll give you 15 minutes here before the meeting in the briefing room. Will that do? Oh, just lovely. But in the meantime, let's... We're all set up for the press conference and TV broadcast, sir. Well, thanks, Charlie. Oh, will you take Miss Prattles and Major Moore for a cup of coffee and bring them back here in about 20 minutes? I have a few classified matters to discuss with the Colonel. Highly classified. Spankin' time. Colonel, I'm sending Major Moore as your co-pilot. Bill Moore. Oh, no, General, you can't. And why not? The big lug hates me. He's jealous of me. No, you'll have to pick someone else. Now, you listen to me, Bright Eyes. Bright Tice, if you please. Shut up, Bright Eyes, and listen to me. Major Moore is the best pilot we have, better than you are. But I don't understand Pipe why down. you... down. Then be quiet. If he'd weighed 90 pounds instead of 180, then he'd, he'd be, be a colonel, a public hero, and you'd still be a captain. But you got the orbital flight. You got the ticker tape parades and all the rest. Never you got too your big own for your room, riches. the prince's phone, the TV whenever no, you wanted don't. it. One, colonels don't say no to generals. Two, you're not a superwoman, you're a spoiled brat. Three, any more guff out of you and I'll turn you over my knee and spank you. If you do, I'll shout the whole place down. I might add that this room is soundproof. You wouldn't dare. You want to try me? I spanked your co-pilot, no. didn't I? No, 
sir. Well, we better get out of here. All right. Come on. Spanky oh, really okay. is protocol in the upper echelons of NASA. Let's talk about this flight, shall we? As illustrated in this film, thank you, Cambot, the tie of the future will be cut short to eliminate the age-old morning question, is it appropriate to tuck my tie into my pants? In the future, it won't even be an option. In fact, there'll be no room in the future for fashion blunders when the short guy, a go-go tie, swings into high. But what other roads will the tie take in days of future past? To start things off, Tom Servo, who we call Cheeky, is sporting the Hexfield body tie from the year 4000. That's right, whether you're inside, outside, or upside down, the Hexfield body tie fits and fits. Very nice, Tom. Thank you. Don't talk to me. I'm a high fashion model from the future. Sorry, Tom. Um, I'm wearing the anti-grava tie. This tie is a brainchild of the defective fashion jackals direct to use store. It implies to the travel conscious that you're no stranger to anti-gravity space travel. Pop-up sleeves are optional. Crow from the planet Ulio Kuriakin rages on into the year 9000 with a tie that acknowledges men will always dribble. Oops. It oh. senses the soup on your lips, reaches up and dabs the soup away. And now our own Tom Servo is back, just out of the dressing room, I might add, in the nick of time with the ultimate tie design for our friends from the Church of the Future Machismo Irony. They guarantee this will stay stylish for millennia to come. This tie is from the Warp Burning Plastic Collection, again from those fashion drones on Maja 5. This tie automatically lengthens to ever-changing tides and trends of fashion. Oh, we got movie sign! Let's cheese it! Let's go! A rocket flight from the Earth directly to the moon. I thought that tie thing was funny. I don't know about you. But now that we have a that was great. In space revolving around the Earth, a satellite view, I might add, directly to the heroic first orbital flight by Colonel Brightheis four years ago. Now that we have a space station, or Frisbee, it is at last possible to send a ship, or batteries, all the way around the moon, or playground ball. On this trip, Dr. Werner will photograph the back face, or double. The ship will then return to the space station, or Frisbee. I'm so glad it's Or large barge. And so will all my readers be. But General, what's the purpose of all this? What do you mean, Miss Prattle? Well, my editor, oh, an old bear, nothing ever suits him. Well, he says this whole thing is a boondoggle, just another way of wasting tax money. Now, what am I to tell him? Tosh, a fair Hittle, question, Miss Prattle. Mummery, poppycock. This round the moon flight is a necessary step before establishing a base on the moon. It's a, a survey flight. Maybe someday the so statesman will make military bases. I bet military he gives good spankings. If so, fine. But in the meantime, if there is going to be a base on the moon, and there will be, it's my I want business it to, be first to see base. that it's in safe hands. I'm not uh, even supposed to be here. Ma'am, the most important thing in the world to me is the military security of the United States. And my dog, Flappy. And I'm not in the least bit apologetic for my attitude. I wonder, General, could you tell me something about this wonderful space station? I'll help you with the cue yes. cards. That would be very interesting, General. Well, I can give you a rough idea. The station is a titanium hull with steel bracing. 350 feet in diameter. It rotates completely around the Earth in a transpolar orbit about 10 times a day. At present, the station is in a state of freefall. Freefall? Could you explain that a little more? Well, of course. When we speak of freefall, we simply mean that the station and everything in it are moving around the Earth at a speed which is great enough so that it cannot fall toward the Earth. But it is also moving at a speed, which is not great enough in order to enable it to go out into space. Therefore, the forces of gravity and speed are now in balance. That was very good. Yay! Oh. Nothing he in made the it through. Has any weight. No weight? What a wonderful idea. 
You it's got to be hard for I her to imagine. I wouldn't wear anything? Nothing at all. Oh. As a matter of fact, you'd have to wear magnetic shoes to keep you on the floor. Why, I have a and pink pair of those at home. Or the ceiling. I wonder, General, could I arrange to go there, to the space station? Well, hardly, Miss mm. Prattles. There's the little problem of escape velocity, ma'am. It's just about $300 a pound to send anything to the station. And consequently, our personnel must all weigh less than 160 pounds. You're over by a metric ton. It's so lovely to weigh nothing at all. <laughs> well. I have heard of the H-bomb, General. Isn't it dangerous living and working so near to it? I'm very sorry, Doctor, but that's a highly classified subject. A simple yes or no would do, Dickweed. Ooh. Isn't she something? Yeah, and the girl ain't bad either. General Green, your rocket ship number three, Canada, ready for takeoff to space station. No Please diving or splashing, please, down. and no running on Happy the deck. Landing. Happy landing, sir. Colonel Bright Ice, your ship is fueled. Checkoff list completed. Do you need any help? No, thank you, Major. I'm perfectly capable of getting into the rocket myself. Well, all right, Miss Gloria Steinem. That's Ms. Gloria Steinem. All right, yeah. Hey, there's only one bunk. Can I strap you in, <laughs> Colonel? No, thank you, Major. Are your ship to ship and ship to blockhouse frequencies operating? Incoming only, Colonel. <laughs> Orders are to keep the channels clear until the Canada blast off. Canada to blockhouse. Request permission to stop pumps. Permission Sorry, uh, but Canada is dry. Hey, Canada, take off, seconds. you hosers. <laughs> uh, yeah, our subject today is uh, space launches. Uh, so uh, we're going to have a takeoff. <laughs> hey, you get it? You know, it's kind of like a rocket's going to take off, and then they say take off on that bit. Look at that takeoff. Well, hey. good day to you then. Captain. Thank you, yes, Colonel. Colonel. Mexico to Blockhouse. Request permission to start pumps. Permission granted. Mexico to Blockhouse. Make a run for the border. Blockhouse to Mexico. Clearance granted. You are minus 10 seconds. 9, 8, 3, 7, 13, 6, 9, 5, 128. 4, 33. A million five. Hut. Two. One. Don't go. blow it. It's five. a big chance. Oh. Ooh, Buddy Epson's happy. She's absolutely ballistic. Control to Mexico. Prepare to receive line. Looks like deep 13, kind of. Buckle, buckle, bang on it now. Buckle, cow, buckle, buckle, bang on it now. Bring them in. Buckle, buckle, bang on it now. Buckle, cow, buckle, buckle, bang on it now. Welcome to Whammo World. Do it. Lock three to Mexico. You are secured. You may disembark. Over. Mexico to lock three. Disembarking. <laughs> I must report immediately. See you before you leave. I'll be with you as far as weight control. I don't need any weight control. Maybe a tummy tuck or something. This is all muscle. This is the future when they sold the Dodgers back to Brooklyn. Hope you enjoyed the trip, Colonel. Happy landings, Bill. 
Thank you, Captain. Uh, you dropped your pen. Shoes untied. <laughs> I love this. Hey, don't cross the split screen. Art design by M.C. Escher. Whoa. Whoa. Please be seated. Thank you, sir. Nice to see you again, Colonel, Major. Major. Colonel. Please Doctor. Please yourself in, Colonel. You know, I'm Captain. particular about these things. You're in free fall. The General has asked me to brief you on the conditions of this shoot. As you know, it's to be a second lunar flight. Colonel Brighteyes will pilot. Major Moore, co-pilot. Dr. Werner will do the photographic and scientific work as you pass around the back face of the moon. I think we should attempt a landing, sir. Shut up. One step at a time, Colonel. There'll be only a 25-second margin of fuel over and above that calculator that's necessary for the flight and resumption of the orbit with the station. Therefore, you must proceed exactly according to your flight plan. If you make this one all right, we may give you a crack at the first moon landing. Bright eyes for 50 points. Four, sir. The Magellan is fueled and ready according to plan. Check off list completed. Bill for 20 points. We'll blast off in 37 minutes. It's yours, Colonel. Man your ship. Or woman your ship, as it were. <laughs> Boy, walking on the walls must be a big problem. Speed bump. Magellan to lock four. All secure. Shove off. Same to you, Toots. Lock four to Magellan. Shoving off on count of ten. The technical term, uh, shoving off. Magellan to space control. Check starting coordinates. Over. Your coordinates are Polaris 83 degrees, 62 minutes, axis A. Regulus, 180 degrees, 29 minutes, axis B. Glutimus Maximus Radius Meaningless Dribble Over Initiate Cheesy Effects Sequence Uh, roger that uh, Initiating Cheesy Effects, Bill Look, they're using Viewmaster technology Oh Battery pack Separating from Frisbee Look, the Grand Tetons. Slowly right about two degrees. Nose south, one degree. Little more down, hold it. Back. Perfect. Steady. Hold it. Hand me the Indian ceremony at the Grand Canyon. Rocket ship Magellan to space control. We are now correctly aligned. Over. You have 13 seconds to blast off. Mark. 13. 12. 11. 10. 9. 8. 7. 5. 6. 9. 13. 8. 4. 7. Six, two, five, one, five. ten. Wow, free game. Duracell away, the copper top shuttle. Oi! Bye. Bon voyage. You know, uh, numbers are really meaningless in a gravity o meter. Initiate meaningless lights. Up it goes. But what is controlling the ship now? As you can see by the lights in the tape control, the autopilot is keeping us on our computer track, with the ship in its proper attitude. I see. Ordinarily, the rocket jets are controlled by the autopilot. But the pilot can always fire by hand. Now, if I were to throw this switch, I would override the automatic pilot and the jets would fire. So, but 
How would you guide it? Well, it's broken. Well, you huh? can't exactly steer a rocket, since there's nothing out there to grab hold of. You must first turn it by the flywheels, and then it is held steady by the gyroscopes while you fire the jets. And the very whole thing's held up by string. Very interesting indeed. Thank you very much. She always gets to look in the Viewmaster. This, these people are dressed like camp counselors. Like this? I can't work now. The co-pilot board is dead. Who? Huh? I wouldn't touch it, though. Sorry. Think nothing of it, Doctor. The Major doesn't like for someone else to play with his toys. But that's enough now. I'll give you another lesson tomorrow. Oh, get that lady a saucer of milk. Meow. I think we have the cameras adjusted now. Uh, they can run by themselves for an hour or two. But doctor, you haven't set the automatic trip yet. <laughs> uh, the automatic That's trip, yeah. It's hard to take anyone in a flannel skull like cap seriously. Be glad to fix it. Oh, fine. And while you're back after, I think I'll warm up the radio. We'll be back inside of Earth soon. Maybe I can find out how the World Series came out. I suppose you're a Dodger fan, huh? Do they play for the Fuhrer? Oh, Oops. I, uh, I thought you used to teach in Brooklyn. Well, that's right. Yeah, I mean, uh, yes. I'll go below. You see if you can raise Earth. If I could raise the Earth, I wouldn't need to go into space, you dolt. Hey, there's no safety rail on that excess hole. He's not real. He just crawled into the septic tank. Colonel. Colonel, wake up. What is it, Bill? That guy Werner, he's a phony. What? Explain yourself. Mm. Those two rockets are not enough about photography. I know more about his cameras than he does. I think you're imagining things. No, Werner's a wiener. I am, am I? He's supposed to be from Brooklyn, and he's never even heard of the Dodgers. Look, I don't know what his game is. Maybe it's sabotage. So, What's there to the spy say? comes out of the hole, runs Major, around the I control panel, then goes back happened. down in. Oh my God! It's hands down the slap happiest game ever. Whoa. Yeah. I am not an animal. Got your nose. While Bright Eyes relaxes in the chase lounge, Jim will attempt to subdue the angry spy. This is low impact aerobics. It's low impact filmmaking too. Higher and higher they climb to heights they'd never been to before. And it was good. Got to push button. Got to slow down our orbit now. Up, up, up. Got to find way to get button up. Thank goodness. Nice tag. Honey, come here. Look, the spy looks so cute when he's oh, sleeping. Get out of here. Come on. Looks like one of your prom dates, Joel. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's new. It's improved. It's Spackham, as seen in the movie Project Moonbase. Yes, yeah, Spackham, the miracle home product you thought you'd never need. Part wood, part industrial resin, part pasteurized processed cheese food product. That valuable china crack? No problem. Just a dab of Spackham will do the trick. Try Spackham on an onion roll for a real lunchtime treat. Takes care of rust on that old jalopy, and ladies will just love how Spackham removes those nagging liver spots and planter's wards. Slice thin for a fabulous roast substitute. Kids will just have a ball with Spackham. Change your mother into a basketball and drive out rodents and other household pets. Including 
include spackum in your next oil change to lubricate and remove diaper rash while it whitens your wash and melts those pounds away. Mike Polynesian Cheese Devils with a little marshmallow cream, a handful of crunchy fire ants, and lots of velvety spackum. Eskimos love the way spackum takes the gum out of diesel generators. Mom loves the way it cleans jewelry. Dad loves the way it takes the paint off that old table in the attic. And kids just love it for a snack anytime. Massage it into your scalp for a refreshing change of mind. Rub it into your chest and feel the petroleum vapors go to work. Not an aerosol, not a paste, and not available in any stores. It's Spackum, and it's available at this one-time, low, low, everyday bargain price. And if you order now, you'll receive a no extra charge a year's supply of Spackum. Cuts through this tomato like it was a tin can. Snaffles caps off jars, bottles, and the baby. And boy, does it catch fish. You could tell they're about to land because the music couldn't get any lower, you know? The Lunar Explorer model sets down on the moon surface model. That's one small step for special effects, one giant leap for our imagination. That was great. There was nothing fake about that one. Oh, these shorts are binding. Like his contract. Bright eyes, get your shoes on, honey. We're at Grandpa's. He might even have a quarter for you, honey. We made it, didn't we? Excuse me, space food, dehydrated ice cream, you know. I guess so. The pressure's still up. Care to tango? Bill, I muffed it. What do we do? Take it easy. Come on. But you don't understand. There isn't enough fuel left. We can't take off. Woo! Sorry to have gone female on you, Major. I didn't mean to take advantage of it. That's all right. I'm feeling kind of punchy myself. What do you think we should do? You asking my advice? Officially? Let's yes. start a life. A you and me and the double makes well, three. Uh, in that case, I, uh, I think you better powder your nose. Oof. Go soak your head. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get rid of him. What are you going to do with him? Well, I thought I'd dress him up like us. That's pretty degrading. Well, I, uh, I could shove him through the airlock. But instead, I think I'll tie him up in the storeroom. Yeah. I've got an idea about him for later on. What is it? Don't worry. It'll be rough. Ooh, that one set off the fire alarm. Now we've got more important things to worry about. How much food there is, how much water, how much air. How much love. Which one runs out first? Oh, Bill, they'll rescue us. Certainly they will. How? How will they find us? We've been out of radio communication ever since we went around behind the moon. She left a trail of breadcrumbs. We probably landed out of sight of Earth. <laughs> Might as well <laughs> be on Neptune. Come on, little fella, you're gonna get bed sores. Slide, please. Uh, this is us at the Grand Canyon. We got sore on those burrows. This is uh, Glacier National Park. Little Bobby turned his ankle. We had to go back down early. <laughs> uh, this is Space Mountain at Disney World, you know. Bobby lost his corn dog over on the Matterhorn. Am I boring you with this stuff? No, not at all. Hey, look, a walk-in trash can. What a way to go. Bill, what can we do? Well, first, let's find out where we are. All right. I'll take the cola stat, and as soon as I have a fix, you can feed tape into the computer. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Frisbee 4. What's a Frisbee 4? No report from the Magellan, sir. She is now exactly 18 minutes, 14 seconds overdue. That agent must have done something. Why, they couldn't be even 40 seconds overdue if they were in their orbit. They've been interfered with in some way or another. Order a continuous radar surveillance of all their area in their emerging sector and keep an operator on that radio until we hear from them. I'll stay here and bark out orders. Well, according to my calculations, 
We're about 125 miles past the crater Grimaldi. We're centrally located just off the Schlossen cutoff. The furthest position from which we could beam a signal to the satellite station. And two doors down from the Subway yeah. sandwich shop. Could you possibly rig a relay for us on one of those mountain peaks in that direction? I don't know. Our oxygen tanks on our spacesuits only carry a four-hour supply. We have to do a show. My dad has a barn. Equipment aboard, so it uh, wouldn't be too difficult if I could make it. Oh, Bill, you must. You must. Well, there's only one way I can do it. I'll have to go down and get Warner and take him with me. TV sets. Tons of. Warner, get up. Wow. We've landed on the moon. Since we're beyond radio reach of the Earth, I have to go out and set up a relay. Have fun. You're coming with me. Our lives depend upon us doing set this. Set up quickly. a relay with two guys. It doesn't make sense. It's not worth it. It's a gamble whether or not we'll ever make it. Bet you a C note we die. All right. I'm with you. I wouldn't have done this if I had been forced into it. Let's go. And remember, one false move and you get this. Wow, cool. Can I keep it? Well, your wrists didn't grow together. I was wrong. Uh, uh, this is the way the first Walenda died. Bill is sporting a light cotton jumper pleated at the knees and is carrying a set of rabbit ears. Notice the rich styling on his rabbit ears. Very futuristic. While the turncoat... While the turncoat... Thank you. Enjoys a spandex sports suit, fashionable for either work, play, or sabotage. From Moonflex, one hundred and fifty dollars. Hmm. Wish us luck, Colonel. Good luck, Bill. Happy landing. Didn't they already land? Suckers! <laughs> Bill, do you read me? Come in, Bill. Oh, that's where my old school used to be. You know, all those hills weren't there before. Contact. I'll call you back in about two hours. Okay, but Mom's calling later, so if it's busy, keep trying. They look like salt and pepper shakers. Hey, uh, Bub, uh, give you a nickel if you scale that cliff. I'll show you my sore toe. Cliff diving on the moon. Their heads look like bell jars. Come on, be a man. Get up that rock. You're one six your own weight. Come on, you wuss. Beat cheeks. I can't believe what a spaz you are. Now, come on. If you don't get your butt up on that rock on the count of three, I'm gonna hurt your insides, boy. That's right. Night of a thousand stars. Wow, that ship's only three feet away. It looks like a model from here. Well, it is. Well, now at least we'll be able to get HBO. Right, Ice. We have established the relay station, and we're returning to the ship now. Our oxygen reserve may not be enough to carry us back. If uh, we don't make it, good luck and God bless you. I'm sorry, uh, what? I wasn't listening. Be very careful going down. Those rocks can be very, very slippery. Oh, come on. What could happen? We're one six our own weight. Nothing could. Oh! Oh! Oh, right in the butt. Hey, quit fooling around down there. Nice half gainer. Oh, rats. Now I gotta drag it's him. He's a half back. traitor now. Half traitor? Bill! Come in, Bill!
What? Sleeping on the job again, huh? Looks like we got another fish tank for the ship. Oh, I hate when that happens. Poor guy. By this time, my lungs were aching for air. <laughs> Isn't that a you line from Sea Hunt? Here. Yeah. You must. Get back to where you once belonged, Jojo. Well, I didn't mean to hurt anybody. We were just playing. Mom says sometimes I play too rough. I'm probably a lot bigger than the other kids are. And, well, I was just goofing off, and now I guess he's dead. I was playing, and well, it wasn't really my fault. I feel like such a jerk. I never really killed anybody before. Oh, jeez. Oh, I don't know. I, I just got to learn to be around with the other kids. I spent a lot of time with my books in my room, and, well, oh, oh, I don't know. I'm just no good. I, I, I don't even deserve to eat supper tonight. This is no time to make dust, Angels. Get up. Let, let down the hoist for me. Hey, pretend your legs don't work. That's cool. Yeah, it's fun. Well, you're not that bad of a guy. You got your warm moments. In the center ring for your pleasure and excitement, the only aerial act on the moon. Come on, come on! It's a G.I. Joe action set. Comes with Moon Man, Space Pod, and detachable retinas. Head and legs sold separately. By Blamo. To Space Home. Magellan to Space Home. Come in, please. WMOON TV has canceled Magellan its broadcast Space day. We will resume Magellan programming at 7 a.m. And now, our national anthem. Magellan to Spacom. Magellan to Spacom. Come in, please. Did you make it work? I'm afraid not, Bill. I've been trying for five hours and nothing's happened. Maybe we should have pointed that antenna towards Earth. Monitor switches now. Should it be? Yes. I hooked our emergency relay to tie in with the four television on Press number three on your board. No, not that channel three. Spacecom to Magellan, we read you. Sir, I should have came to consciousness a lot sooner. It would have saved Number us a lot of trouble. Good. Spacecom it took you so Magellan. long to reach me. I'm in the other speaking. room. Colonel Brightice, will you please get Dr. Warner out of the cabin? I have a classified message for you. Scramble, code Y, combo three. He's not in the cabin, sir. Are you sure that he can't hear me? Quite sure, sir. Colonel, listen carefully. Make him a prisoner at once. Take him alive if you can, but don't take uh, any chances. It's a little too late he on that alive Dr. thing, Warner. sir. He's a spy. He plans to take control of the Magellan and crash it into the space station. The FBI have just rescued the real Dr. Werner. Yes, sir, we know. Repeat. Dr. Werner is dead. You see, he did try to take over the ship, and Major Moore stopped him. But in the struggle, the jets were fired, and I found it necessary to land on the moon. You so what? We have enough fuel Repeat. You did what? We had to land on the moon. Oh. Commodore, give me a channel through the Pentagon immediately. The Magellan has just landed on the moon. Colonel, report your present situation in detail. Yes, sir. Landed on Luna, approximately 125 miles back of Crater Grimaldi, and approximately 10 miles beyond the Terminator. There's there a Howard no Johnson's at the interchange, and we passed the stuck. Anybody heard? Only fatality, Dr. Werner. He died during the establishment of the radio relay, 11 miles from our present position. This relay is the means through which we've established contact with you. Are you in any immediate danger? No, well, the sir. boredom is getting we've pretty relentless. We've got to work this out. I'll, uh, I'll call you in exactly 60 minutes. Spacecom to Magellan. General Green speaking. Bill, you're Magellan. wasting your life in front of that TV. Magellan to Spacecom. Yes, General. 
Moore speaking. Colonel Bright Eyes standing by, sir. Good. Now pay attention, Bill. Now that you two are on the moon, stay there. Do you understand? Yes, That's sir, easy. I... Pay attention and don't interrupt. The Joint Chiefs have conferred with the President and it's been decided to change your mission. You are now moon base number one. You will oh, remain great. where you are and show the flag until such time as you can be relieved by a larger permanent force. Show the In flag the meantime, to who? Ration your water, food, and air to last at least 10 days. That's within safe limits based on what you had. And we'll undertake to get more supplies over to you in that time. Colonel, you've had drone pilot experience. Bill, and you've read board your ship's radio equipment to permit it to jot these supply rockets down? Well, we don't have anything so, better sir. to do. I'd better be able to. I'll have one of the electron pushing boys advise you on it. I know it can be done. They've already told me so. Uh-huh, well, la-di-da. That'll be all now, moon base number one. But don't go away, Bill. Oh, Colonel, I have a classified message for Major Moore only. Will you be so kind as to go aft and close the hatch? Huh? You heard what he said. Down below. Very well, sir. If you say so. She could just put her hands over her ears and go, la, 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 la. She could. Oh, Bill. Scramble code E, combo two. Yes, sir. Over and out on clear. Standing by on scramble. You read me, Bill? Yes, sir. Take off your rank, son. This is man to man. <laughs> mono okay, or baby. mono? Oh, I'll spill it. How's it with you and Bright Eyes? You still sore her? No. Uh, she's Good thing she went below. You know. <laughs> Seems to me you used to be pretty sweet on her way back when. Ah, uh, nice well, kid. Kind of nosy, promoted. though. Tell me the truth, Bill. I gotta know. Could it be that you're still sweet on her? Tell me the truth or don't answer at all. He's not Dr. Well, Bellow. Be. He's Dr. Chuck Woolery. Papi, what are you driving at? Now, now, don't get shirty, son. I don't like prying into your affairs any more than you like it. But I've just been talking with the White House. The president thinks, and so do I. The president well, thinks that's something new. Way. You're going to be shut up in that tin can with a pretty young woman for weeks, maybe months. Public opinion being what it is, it'd be a lot better for everyone, for the country, for the service, and for you, if you two were married. What are you saying? I'm no rabbit. I'll think it over, boy. I can't give you an order on this, but uh, think it over. Listen, Pappy. She wouldn't have me on a silver platter. How about in a tin can? Sure? How about an air mattress Maybe slathered with butter? Right. Oh. But, Sorry. but you don't understand. She, uh, she has no use for me. Have you tried asking her? Hey, I never thought of that. <laughs> May I come up now? It's lonely down here. Oh, sure. I, I was just going to tell you that the general was through. And so are my wild bachelor days. What did he say? Well, uh... Say it. Oh, ask her. Oh, Come on. on. Nothing. Come on, ask her. Don't be a pansy. Do Not it. Right ask her. Yes, Bill. Ask her. I, uh, say it. Go, I go, was go, wondering go, if, go, uh, go, go. If you could, uh... Ask her. Could what, Bill? Ask her. Uh, I mean... Could you, uh... Yes, yes. Oh, Jiminy. Oh, skip it, but we'll take it up later. What a oh! Nice. Bonehead. Oh, well, they must have to watch uh, marital aid tapes now or something. What is that? This looks like an early version of Pong. It's kind of redundant, huh? Yeah. That's no fun at all. Oh, no fun Ooh. at all. Look, it fell right over. Crashed is more like it. Oh, Bill, it's landed. Yeah. I'll go out and see what's in it. It's the minister. Sort of like an interstellar dunk tank. 
Oh, the Wells Fargo racket is coming down the street. He's called for the breaking fastball. I got a rocket full of stuff and I'm gonna go get it. Yes, yes, yes. Now remember, never attempt to remove the bees from the hive without proper protective gear. Hey, it looks like a V2. Yeah, he could have had a V. I'm sorry. No. Thanks. And it's filled with cat food. This rocket was supposed to go to the cat women of the moon. Well, let's see what we got here. One 45 caliber handgun, four clips of ammunition, $100 in gold coins, two packages of chewing gum, two issue prophylactic. Shoot, guy could have a pretty good time in Vegas with this stuff. No butter. They all say occupant. No expense was spared in spraying these cardboard boxes gold. Bills, bills, bills. Bill, did they send everything we need? Bright eyes, it's Christmas. They're all bills. Uh, wait, that's me. Lots and lots of spackum. <laughs> Hey, it's giant Rubik's Cube. I love the smell of spackum in the morning. It smells like chicory. If you can solve this puzzle, you can get married. And then try solve that puzzle. Moon base to Spacom. Come in, please. Spacom to Lunar Base. I want to talk to General Green on a secure channel. Colonel Bright Eyes speaks. Yes, ma'am. Scramble code F, combo one. Adam and Eve on a raft. What is it, Bright Eyes? Any trouble? No. Only with the invitations, time. but we got them out in time. But you know, we've promised to do something. Yes, and a good thing, too. What about it? Well, if you expect me to go through with it, there's something you've got to do for me. No, Would I'm not going to MC your wedding. Well, at this point, you can just about write your own ticket, if I can do it. What is it, kid? Well, it's this. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God. He's in rented to shorts. This man and this woman in the and that's the t-shirt her mom got married in. this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold, to love and to cherish, in sickness and in health, till death do you part. I do. You take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold, to love, honor, and obey, in sickness and in health, till death do you part. Or until the oxygen wears out. Who giveth this woman? I give this woman. You have no right Take to give that Take her left hand, woman. place the ring upon her finger. Where do you get the ring? By the power vested in me, I pronounce you man and wife. Well, you're a notary public. Mmm, juicy fruit. Don't go away, kids. The President of the United States wants to speak to you. Hmm, I wonder what he'll have to say. Oh? Huh? Can you hear me? No, no, no. Yes, Put the president on, not I his have wife. A present for you from the people of the United States. On my recommendation, and it's with Dr. Ruth. Ruth, you're on the air. You are today promoted Let's to the rank see. of Brigadier General of the United States Space Force. You will consider yourself detached from USS Magellan. It's very healthy to be in a capsule together with US your friends. Moon base number one. To guard and protect it. For the benefit of all the free peoples of Yeah, Earth. yeah, yeah. Speed it up. We got some things we want to get to. Yeah, we got life lives. Lead. Here, honey, I got you this poison throwing star. You like your wedding present, dear? And I didn't get you anything. What? Oh, 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 The worst. Oh, pathetic.
got through that one. Hey, thanks everybody for your cards and letters. They really helped pull us through. Yeah, we thought the Lord was going to call Joel home until we got this card. Yeah, Kambach, can we show a picture of this one? Crow, you want to read that one, buddy? Yeah, it says, please send us info on the MST 3000 fan club. We enjoy it very much. Thanks. Happy holidays from the both of us. Wow. Whoa, look at these Swedes. Yeah. Whoa. You know how they say when people get married, they start looking alike. These two have been together a long time. My <laughs> turn, my turn. Okay, let her go, uh, Mr. Tom Servo there. Right you are, Slappy. This one comes from uh, Jeff Conrad in Bloomington, Minnesota. Greetings, I've been a longtime fan of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Uh, a group of friends and I watch it every week on videotape. Hey, tell me, will the new shows be in color or all in black and white? Uh, sincerely, Jeff Conrad. Well, and we got this last one here from Fabulous Hawaii. Ooh. Yeah. And it says, Dear ah. Sirs, I'd like to join your fan club. Please send me information, membership cards, large sums of money. Very funny. That's from Sam Litzinger from Honolulu. Aloha. Uh, yeah, Tom Servo, why don't you read that information for the people on uh, Earth? Put it up there, Cam. But give it to me one time on the uh, CG uh, Helvetica Bold, will you? All right, the Mystery Science Theater 3000 Fan Club, P.O. Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota 55343. Send your cards and letters quickly. All right, I guess that ends the experiment, sirs. Uh, when are we going to get some color movies? Color? You want color? Talk to Ted Turner. Here, file this. Consider it filed. Well, hasta luego for now, my little spud bunny.